Alrighty, everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to The King's Speech. Uh, so, as promised, we're starting to try to get back into some read throughs this weekend. Uh, I'm not getting back into it full tilt just yet because I still need to deal with some. Uh, not deal with, I just, I've just been busy the last little while, so uh, we're not going to get back into quite the full swing of things until next week. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try to upgrade or at least update my streaming setup a little bit. Uh, so we'll see if how how well that goes over the next little while. Uh, along with that, I have to do some cleanup and prep stuff uh, prep stuff this next week. Uh, but I will be off for a little while, or off, not off from this, but off from uh, work in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so hopefully in that time, I will try to play catch up with a bunch of these read throughs uh, that I've fallen behind on. Uh, so lots to look forward to. Uh, so yeah, well, next week I think we'll be back into it full tilt with Alita, Shonen Jump stuff, and I will do a proper channel update sometime then, uh, I promise. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, with that said, I'm really excited to dive back into Monstrous this week. Uh, we're also trying to, our new recording setup, we're going to try recording this uh, with OBS this time instead of the usual stuff that I do. Uh, so hopefully there's not going to be any issues with like lag or stutter anything like that. Uh, but if you do notice anything, uh, please do let me know and I can try to like adjust my settings, change stuff uh, as necessary if need be. Uh, but yeah, uh, without further ado, let us get into it with uh, Monstrous Chapter 32. <laughs> oh, it's excited to get back into this. And we pick up off with uh, Corvin bowing in front of an altar and praying with, Goddess, I beg you please watch over Batani. Fill her with your healing light. Let your love move through her. Give her the strength to live and fight. And forgive me, if you can. Forgive me for following the truth of what I know in my heart, even if it means bringing shame upon my family. And you see as he's walking back into uh, the hospital, you see uh, some of the cats helping some of the uh, wounded. And yeah, perhaps with the Warlord's airships we can begin a proper evacuation of the wounded. It's like I wouldn't count on it. And he sees uh, back in sister's room the kippa trying to like, feed her a bowl of something. And Corvin's like, Kippo, what are you doing here? So, Lord Corvin, I found some willow ward for your sister's fever just outside the city. He's like, but you should be far from here. Very, very far. He's like, oh, sorry about that. But I guess Miss always intended to come right back. She said the Baroness has too many spies. <laughs> yes. It's like Miss wanted her to think she'd left Ravenna. And Corvin's like, goddess, no. It's like, Micah! And you see as Micah's just walking away outside the city. And you see, uh, God, Tuya trying to, like, run up to her, like, you know, covering herself in a cloak. As, uh, Micah just stares at her. It's like, wife, move away! And you see her, like, as she's, like, trying to stay up a hand out, like, it just slowly drops. And you see, uh, the warlord rushing towards her, going, you vile degenerate! You dare trespass into my quarters? I'll cut your eyes out! It's like, didn't you fucking hear me? She like, tries to swipe at her. Micah just like sidesteps back. And then uh, the warlord picks up her helmet. He's like, where did you get that necklace? The, she's the little stone that Micah has. It's like, auntie, I heard you've been looking for me. And you see the warlord's just getting more and more pissed. And she's like, guard, seize her! And he's like, really? This is how you treat your only niece? It's like, no wonder you weren't grandmother's favorite or anyone else's, and you see the warlord just grabbing her by her shirt and hoisting her up. It's like, you even sound like Moriko. She was always quick with a cheap insult. And Micah's like, it's not cheap when it's true. <laughs> the warlord tries to punch her again, and Micah just casually dodges it. It's like, you should really learn to control yourself, auntie. A violent temper is so unattractive. Wouldn't you agree, Baroness? And you see you two are just like grabbing onto her arm, be like, calm down! Your sister is dead. Taking out your anger on her daughter is unproductive, no matter how annoying she is. It's like, and it's far too public for this conversation. And she goes, take the half-wolf to the warlord's airship. Tell the new captain to stand down preparations for battle and prepare instead for departure. And you see them exchanging some more furious looks. As you have, you seem to have already forgotten that you don't give orders to your wife. It's like, hey, that's not what I, Micah's like, hey, that's not what I've heard. It's like, you laugh all you like, but you will tell me everything you know about the weapon that destroyed Constantine. Your mother's weapon. Even if I have to tear her secrets from you scream by scream. And Micah's like, my mother's weapon? 
I'm surprised you haven't asked your wife. She knows exactly what destroyed Constantine. She was there, after all, with me. She knows all my secrets. And you see the warlord just turning in surprise to look at Tuya. And you see again uh, with some refugee, or no, sorry, uh, with the uh, Kumeyas are having tying up some Arcanics. It's like we're not taking the male demons with us. It's like if there's room, but the females first in case those blasted airships start bombing the forest. It's like you heard the colonel wants to sterilize the demons. It's like what a fool. We need them to breed. Our scientists are trying to encourage additional ilium development in the womb. And you see, this is humiliating. We are merry and blessed creations to be created to be holy warriors. And what do they have us doing? Chaining demons for transport. And you see the other two uh, hybrid Kameas standing around. It's like, how is it our fault that we were outnumbered in Ravenna, betrayed by those cursed Inquisitrixes? And you see uh, one of the arcane children going, you, you're, you're one of us. Why are you helping them? And he's like, how dare you? And he's just like backhand the kid. And he's like, we're human. And you see uh, Colonel Anawad coming up and going, out of the mouths of babes. Kumea Ward, remember, Kumea Ward, everything soldier, remember that. The last time we fought this war, the lines were clear. Beautiful even. It was humans against demons. And now we're turning humans into demons. I don't even want to know what's next. Java, when did the radio stop receiving? It's like 30 minutes ago. We think the newly arrived demon ships began jamming our signals. Uh, Colonel, just before the radios went out, we received some odd pings that we can't yet explain. The signature was aerial, but like nothing we've ever seen. And Anuwa's like, it can't be our forces. Our aerial reinforcements are still a week away. It's like, I would urge caution, Colonel. The troops are already unnerved before the siege of Ravenna and the arrival of the enemy's airships has shaken morale further. Yeah, if some units have already abandoned their posts, if they find out the demons are gathering even more forces, it's like they'll stand their ground. And even if, if they don't, I'll turn them over to the Kamea for a vivisection. I've heard it's quite a horrible way to die. Be sure to tell them that. It's like, uh, yes, Colonel. It's like, speaking of the Kamea, a member of their High Council has arrived. She's requested to see you. It's like maybe when I'm dead, will be will that be soon enough? <laughs> uh, sorry, I just trying to look at the recording for a second. Wish. Oh, it does have time? I care. Uh, and you see someone going. It could be, but why tempt fate? Oh, God, Yvette him low or low limb. Sorry. And you see Yvette just standing there with her arms all crossed, being like, Colonel Anawat, such a pleasure to meet you. I am the Lady Yvette Lowlim. I've been sent by the Kamehian High Council to offer my wisdom during your time of need. And Anuwat's like, if by wisdom you mean airships and cannons, maybe I can spare you a minute. Otherwise, good day. It's like, oh, don't be salty, Colonel. Ravenna hasn't gone well for you, has it? There have been a few bumps along the road, yes? War never goes the way we want it to, much like life. It's like, wonderful, a philosophical witch. I remember you now from the old days. You've been in seclusion for years, haven't you? I heard rumors you became unstable after the war. Didn't go well for you either, did it? Makes me wonder why that High Council would send you here of all people. I thought they prided themselves on reason. And you see uh, Yvette just smiling maniacally. And you have uh, one of the other Kameas going, Lady Lolim, what an unexpected honor. When did you arrive? You must be exhausted. It's like, come, let us prepare a meal for you. And as she's turning away for the attendants, she's like, In fact, Colonel Anawat, I did come bearing gifts, which you'll need very soon if you want your troops to live. And you see uh, that uh, Yvette's going to see one of the Kamea hybrids who was like cutting her arm for some reason. It's like, My daughter is the one who I hypothesized your kind could be created with Lilium, enhanced in the womb. I'm pleased it worked, though eventually I'll kill you for not being human enough. Ah, but I see you already guessed that. And you see as uh, she's just reaching for her, you see uh, the little uh, hybrid just like grabbing at her uh, cloak. It's like, indeed, young Zordia, I could certainly use help from someone who understands complexity. And you see uh, back at Constantine, you have, 
It seems as though her negotiation deadline wasn't as firm as she led us to believe. It's like her demands are ridiculous, Rysak. Murder all the Kamea? The Prime Minister will never agree to that. And uh, Rysak's like, I wouldn't be so sure, Atena. The Kamea are a massive threat to her hold over the Federation. Without them, she'd have actual power instead of being a glorified puppet. And she's like, you support this, don't you? I would be murdered, my friends, people I care about. And he goes, who committed atrocities, remember? It's like, not every Kamea agrees with what's been done, but they've been, but they're too frightened to challenge the Mother Superior and High Council. And the novices, they're just children. They only know what they've been taught. And you have Atena, the Kamea are a rotten order, and their need for Lilium has become uncontrollable. They will never stop hunting Arcanix. Father taught us to do the right thing, no matter the personal cost. She's like, ah. Father warned me before I agreed to spy on the Kamea that the price might be too high. If wholesale massacre is the only way to win, then he was correct. And she stands up and goes, and as she stands up, he, uh, Rysak goes, Atena, remember when we were children? You'd come home on break and father would take us sailing all the way down to Pontus? It was good being in a city where humans and Arcanics lived together. And she stands up and just slams the cup down angrily. And he goes, you'd cry every time we had to leave. It's like, of course I remember. I was so angry to be a human born with power. It was unfair that the Kamea could take me from our home because of that. But it was the law. It still is. That's why this ultimatum is so wrong. None of the Kamea had a choice. So tell that to the witches who fled the Federation. They chose to leave rather than participate in genocide. There's always a choice. And you hear an ahem. You know, oh dear, this is quite the argument. And you have uh, Ren uh, along with uh, the lady who uh, was doing the mudra, not the drug running, uh, was helping like, cross the border. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Uh, but he's like, Lady Atena and Commander Rysak, I presume? I am Necromancer Ren Memoriam, and I have a proposition for you. <laughs> and you see in a jail cell that Tuya and Mike have been locked up next to each other. Mike is just completely stone-faced, no expression whatsoever. And Tui is looking like a bit forlorn and sad. And she goes, I suppose Corvin betrayed my identity, or that hateful cat. And uh, Micah just kind of smirks a little. Oh no, sorry, there's some jail cells uh, next to each other, so there's bars uh, separating them. And she's silent for a second before she kind of turns and leans her back against the wall and goes, No one told me anything, Tuya. I was always happy for you to be the smart one. But... <laughs> I was always happy for you to be the smart one, but that didn't mean I was stupid. And you can see just, uh, Tuya just kind of shocked and surprised by this. And you have a, so, this is the mortal who haunts your dreams as Zin kind of materializes out of her. And, uh, speaks in, the uh, so apparently the tongue's untranslated. So I assume the implication is that Tuya can't understand what he's saying. It's like such a hold she has had on your mind. I thought. She must be dead. I mistook your grief, your loss. I see now what you felt was betrayal. And Tuya just got this horrifying expression on her face. And she goes, what is that thing saying, Micah? Micah! And you see... <laughs> My darling daughter, if I just coming up with a bowl of soup and some bread. And she goes, Mr. Monster saying you're a bad person and they're going to eat you. <laughs> God, at this Micah just smiles a little. And she grabs one of the bread uh, from uh, Kippa's tray and goes, Go back to sleep, Zin. It's like, child, there is a time to sleep, a time to hide and observe, and a time to be seen and feared. Your enemies must know you are not alone. And Kip was like, Miss, you need to remember that too. As uh, Tuya's just kind of sitting there like, you know, all disappointed in herself uh, and everything that's going on. And all the, what's the word I'm looking for? Beratings, I guess she's been getting. Uh, but yeah, you see back in the Warlord's room, she's just kind of looking at uh, her little armor stand 
uh, with her sword and armor on it. She's kind of sitting cross-legged on the bed, uh, lost in thought. And then she gets up in her armor and then heads towards the cells where she sees uh, Tuya and Micah sleeping. And she goes into Micah's cell, calls up the sword, and you see, oh, what, what is this? As his tentacles just like come out and curl around it. He's like, I knew you would come. So predictable. And you see that the warlord also can't understand her. She's like, goddess! And you see Tuya waking up with a gasp. And she's like, you smell like an old enemy. And uh, Tuya's like, Micah! Micah, damn you, wake up! Control that thing! And Micah just like pretending to sleep. He's like, bitch, you control it. Isn't that what you want? It's like, get back, fiend, I'll destroy you! And you see her, uh, the pendant that she's wearing like, starting to emanate a green light. It's like, hold that thought. It's like, finally. It's like, God, it's, I used to be better at this. It's like, ah, Micah, there you are. <laughs> As you see a bunch of white claws just reaching through. Uh, the little energy field is coming out of the thing. And you see a grandmother. As you see the uh, wolf lore. Uh, the wolf goddess uh, this phase coming through it's like how overjoyed I am that you finally summoned me my heart has not been this warm in a thousand years it's pained me beyond words to have kept my distance alas I promised your mother it would be your choice and look here so many familiar faces clearly I interrupted a most fascinating reunion it's like, what a delight to be surrounded by family. Is it not, granddaughter? As she just puts a paw on Micah's shoulder. And Micah's like, yes, a delight. And you have an excerpt from the lecture by the esteemed professor Tam Tam, a former first record keeper of the Ishami Temple and learned contemporary of Namron Blacklaw. You have Kat settled the known world long before the arrival of the ancients. It was by all accounts a time of peace, thanks to our unification under the wise banner of Adara Farclaw. The scholarship of the poets was in its infancy, so perhaps that is why there are no trusted records describing the moment when ancients discovered this world or how they first appeared to our ancestors. There are legends, of course, that the ancients had not yet adopted the forms we see them in now, that they were in fact made of light instead of flesh, and that they did not settle this world immediately, but departed and did not return for 500 years. Why? Some say it was Ubasti herself who drove them away the first time. It is somewhat striking that when the ancients did return, it was a small group, smaller than what followed later, and that some of their queens wore the forms of the Jagaran. It is also significant that these ancients did not settle the lands to the north, unlike those who arrived later, and who formed the Dusk and Dawn courts. Instead, they ventured deep into the southern seas, to create a union with the Wave Empress, who is the second of Ubasti's great allies. The Wave Court established itself on an island few have visited, and whose name is protected by the Sirens. Their ancient secrets are as much a mystery as the Deep, and their, arcani and their arcanic children, who venture into the world, seem as ignorant of the Wave Court's full power as the rest of us. Odd that the Dusk and Dawn Courts barely acknowledge the Wave Court's existence. The poets would tell you it is because some bitter and en en enmity remains unresolved between them. But others, such as myself, speculate there's a more disturbing reason, that the ancients of the dusk and dawn are afraid of the wave court and do not want to draw its attention. Oh, I'm so excited for this. So you have chapter 33, and you see uh, the fox ancient. I assume this is going to be... Uh, her standing in front of like this giant uh, claw statue with uh, the eye symbol on his chest. And I assume that's supposed to be a Dara Far Claw. And uh, she just goes on uh, a fox ancient, sorry, a uh, wolf ancient. It's like, bitch. And you see her walking back towards uh, Mike, who's just kind of standing there, arms crossed, waiting impatiently. And she's like, Zin sleeps? It's like, if you call it that. It's like, I do not know how you've accustomed yourself to such a parasite. Fortunately, I'm here now. You won't have anything more to fear from your aunt, I promise you that. And in the dawn court, you'll be even safer. You'll so enjoy its pleasures. A granddaughter of the wolf making her triumphant return. What a joy that will be. Just think, never again will you need to set foot in some impoverished frontier town. This plague reeks of blood and excrement. War is always so disenchanting. And Micah's like, hmm. It's like that disapproving sound. Your mother made noises like that. It's like, you even look like Moriko. 
I find that startling. It's like, why? The warlord is your twin. You see her face all the time. It's like, it's not the same. They were two very different women. But you have Moriko's aspect in your face. Her intensity, her narrowing eye. I find myself nostalgic for my daughter when I see you. It's like, you should have summoned me when she died. I would have saved you. You would have been spared a great deal. And uh, Micah's like, I lost the necklace before the war. When I found it again, it was too late. The harm had been done. It's like, ah. Nonetheless, I'm heartened that Moriko shared my promise to protect you. It's like, like you protected the shaman empress and her child. And she's like, the child lived. In the end, she was protected. It's like, according to the blood fox, the cost of that protection was captivity and experimentation. Javin, yet here you are. Inheritor of the blood, she and the shaman empress might argue that it was worth... Uh, you are inherited of the blood, she and the shaman empress might argue that it was worth the sacrifice so that you might exist. And Micah's like, for what purpose, grandmother? The dust court, of, or whoever the baroness represents, wants my power for themselves. My aunt wants the same thing. Forgive me if I assume you are no different. She goes, ha, huh, do you know what you are? An object of envy, a creature that defies our boundaries, a representation of possibilities that are terrifying when we examine them too closely. I should kill you. Part of me thought of doing so long ago. But perhaps I've softened. You see her just kind of like dragging her claws down uh, the eye tattoo mark on Micah's chest. It's like, ironically, you are part of me and the product of a brilliant, dangerous mind. It's like your mother's mind. And so I allow myself to be curious about the fullness of your potential. And Micah's like, everyone thinks my potential is limited to murder. It's limited to murder. My mother thought the same. It's like, did she? That would be a disservice to your mother's imagination. Now summon Zin, if you will. The old god and I need some time alone. And you see you back with uh, the Siege of Ravenna. You have Lady Low Lim. When you said that you had a weapon that would give my troops, save my troops, I expect that we'd be able to use it before the demons began firing on us. Instead, the forest is burning and so are my soldiers. And you see uh, a bunch of the warlord's airships kind of flying overhead, dropping bombs on the forest. You have Colonel Anuat. A device of this complexity has to be assembled with care. Unless you wish for it to explode. Oh, fucking hell. Unless you wish for it to explode in your face. Yeah, radio signals are still jammed. We have no way of knowing when those other demon ships we detected will arrive. And Anuat's like, tell the officers to continue removing our troops toward the border wall. And uh, Yvette's like, surely you're not planning a retreat, Colonel. Uh, and you have, uh, what happened to your rumored vow to never surrender? And Anuat's like, there are no absolute absolutes in battle. When a situation changes, the whys change too. And that cannon is a bit small for the display of power you're still promising me. Small but deadly, much like you, yes? <laughs> I don't know what's silent before she goes. You don't remember, but we've met before. At Sethanar, during a fundraising gala for the Academy. It was only in passing. And Yvette's like, of course I don't recall. Of course I don't recall those days. The war destroyed frivolity. It's like, but it didn't destroy everything, did it? It's like, what is on your mind, Colonel Anuat? It's like a memory. You spent that whole evening with Moriko Halfwolf, who had come to fetch her daughter from the Academy. And Yvette's like, I'm sure you're mistaken. I don't know anyone by that name. And Anu was like, pa, you're here because Micah Halfwolf is in Ravenna. That's the reason I'm pulling back my troops. You don't give a fuck whether we live or die. She's your mission. The only thing I'm not certain of is why. And Yvette just smiles like, <laughs> she's more than a mission, Colonel. She's my life. It's like, Are you ready to destroy Arcanic uh, airships, Colonel? And you see, I uh, have up the past. It's like, I admit, I was not expecting to meet you again like this. And you see, abominations! And you see uh, the wolf ancient, assume that's uh, Rohar the blood fox. And uh, the bear, was it Baru? Was it Baru the bear's name? Uh, the bear ancient all decked out in their armor and weapons. As they're assaulting Zin, who's kind of cradling the shaman empress's corpse uh, along with the child. You have abominations! It's like, beloved, do not leave us. We need you. 
And the bear king's like, or the bear ancient, like, we cannot let the child live. And uh, the wolf ancient's like, nor am I foolish enough to think we can forget our conflicts. It's like, she will destroy everything. And you see back in the present, it's, uh, she's just having a cup of tea. Uh, she's chatting with Zinn. It's like, but I do hope we can put aside hard feelings. I'd like to think we've both changed over the years. That experience has granted us a higher wisdom. And you see them just silently exchanging looks for a second before she goes, Well, perhaps you'll at least agree we should not drag Micah into our past. And Zinn goes, Which past? The one where your kind were starving and broken, little more than wrecked scavengers. The past where you possessed bodies not your own. The past where you enslaved mortals and transported them to this world. And she thought that makes her pissed and she goes, Enough, Zin! Your hypocrisy is tedious. You, the great murderer, you and your sister brothers lost in exile, devouring everything in your vile path. And you see, oh, hello, dear. <laughs> As Micah comes in, just like dragging the little part of Zin that's coming out of her like a little rope. He's like, I think you two have been alone long enough. He's like, Granddaughter, where is your aunt? It's like blowing up the forest outside Ravenna. For some reason, she seems irritated. It's like, oh, you. It's like, in the Baroness, have you had your own reconciliation? It's like, reconcile what? The Baroness is a stranger to me. It's like, huh. Pack your things, granddaughter. We'll be departing soon. And you see Micah going over to Zid and going, I felt you vibrating from the other side of the tower. Surprised Ravenna didn't explode from the two of you being in a room together. It's like, should I not be furious? Should I not desire vengeance? The ancients imprisoned my kind, then did worse to the beloved. And Micah's like, I know. I caught a glimpse, remember? But Zin, I share her blood. I need to know how you feel about that. It's like, you fear I might punish? It's like, maybe. It was child. I am no fool. It's like, I cannot afford revenge. I lack full strength, and your mortality is my weakness. She could easily kill you. If you die, I sleep, and that cannot be, not before I remember. And you see Micah just like kind of poking around her bed with the pieces of the mask, and she's like, you also don't want to return to my father. He's like, that would be exhausting. It's like, you should have warned you were summoning the wolf. You cannot trust her. It's like my mother said the same thing. She also said that when bargaining with family, trust only gets in the way. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what the fuck's going on, bro? And you see, uh, back in the hospital where Corvin's watching over Batani, he lets out a sigh and you have a gack! As Tano comes up from behind and just loops a piece of rope around him and starts pulling. And goes, Sss, I did warn you. And he's like, Ugh, get off. And he slams his back into the wall. And you see Tano just slashing at him. Jeff, that will do. It's like, ah, ah. And you see Tuya going, why, Corvin? Why would you throw away your life? Why would you throw away the honor of your family for Micah Half-Wolf? And he goes, have you asked yourself that question, Baroness? You could have killed the half of years ago when she was at her most vulnerable. Harvested her body for the dust court. You who were at Constantine. You who witnessed firsthand how her blood awakened. But you didn't tell a soul. Oh, but you didn't tell a soul what she did. You protected her. Pretended she wasn't the one. The question is, why aren't you protecting her now? And she's silent before she goes, She won't live, Corvin. No matter what we do. You know what the oracle said. The blood serves only one mistress, and it isn't her. And he goes, it's a good thing, then, that I put my faith in the goddess and not oracles. And you have a, <laughs> yeah, you really have changed, brother. As Batani just hands him a little pairing knife that's sitting nearby. And you see uh, in the library as uh, Micah is writing down something, and Zin's pouring over some books. And Kip was like, Miss, if you and the Baroness were friends... Why is she trying to hurt you? It's like, well, you've been angry with me before. It's like, not like that. And she's like, little fox, remember who I was when we first met, who I still am. 
You're the forgiving type, but not everything can be forgiven. And she hands a little note she's writing on to Kippa and she goes, Take that letter to Corvin. Stay with him. Don't fucking leave his side until I come to you. If you make me go searching, you're... If you make me go searching, you'll be wearing your tail around your neck. And she puts the little... Oh, God, so adorable. She puts a little pendant around uh, Kippa's neck. And then Kippa just smiles and gives her a big hug. And she's like, I almost believe that, miss. It's like, bye, Mr. Monster. Enjoy your book. <laughs> Sounds like, what? A peculiar child. And as uh, Kippa is running out of the library area room, you see the warlord coming in. And Zin's like, if I eat this one, would the wolf miss her? And uh, Michael's just like, it's like, it would be satisfying to kill one of her children. And uh, the warlord just like grabs her sword and is like, why is that monstrosity growling, whelp? Is it about to attack again? And why is it growing out of your body? And you see her going, well, as she pulls the sword off. And Micah just like puts her hands behind her head. She's like, what happened to the dogs? It's like, what are you talking about? It's like, my mother never spoke of her childhood unless it was about you. Uh, it was a way of keeping you close, I suppose. She told me that when you were small, a Kumean envoy arrived and there were puppies on the ship, fresh born. The human sailors didn't want them, dumped them in the waters of the port. You hated that. <laughs> So you set their ship on fire. She's like, Moriko told you that story? So the puppies drowned, of course. Arcanics don't keep dogs. It's like, you're the warlord, auntie, and Moriko's dead. You don't need to keep repeating the lies you both told your mother. It's like, how dare you be so familiar with me? We might be related by blood, but you're no niece of mine. Your mother abandoned this family. I don't care what that thing is or how much protection you've been granted by the Wolf Queen and my the baroness you will give up moriko's secrets you will tell me what you know of the weapon that destroyed constantine and if you deny me i will obliterate you and micah goes to quote a friend of mine that false bravado must get very tiring it's like trust me i know my mother once compared me to you and it was not a compliment though it was also one of the qualities my mother loved about you in moderation that if you don't like something you try to change it even if it didn't go well for you. She's like, enough! You won't, you can't distract me! It's like my mother's dead, your sister's dead, and what I am may be a mystery, but it's not much of a secret. That is an old god we share, that, that, ah, sorry, that is an old god, we share the same body. It's a blood inheritance, auntie. As much as you and I are wolves, I'm something else too. You think I know what destroyed Constantine, and I do. It was me, Auntie. I destroyed Constantine. Me and the old god together. We were hungry. And you hear a giant boom and a bombs as the giant like explosion rocks the building. And uh, the warlord's like, impossible! My airships push the Federation from Ravenna's walls. And as they run outside, it's like, goddess! It's like, not far enough, it seems. And you see an airship just coming crashing down. And you see uh, Tano going, our ships are going up like paper. It's like, Tano, it's the same weapon that drove us from the Lilium refinery. It's like, curse those witches. And you see whiz is like a giant light. God. A giant lightning bolt's just like zapping the airships out of the air. Do you have mass secure? It's like, yes, ma'am. It's like, then aim high. You need to send these canisters over the wall. And you see him getting out like these giant rocket launcher looking things. They fire like these green missiles uh, into the city. Do you have runs? Like, don't breathe the air. Do you have Goddess! And you see that the whatever gas they're spaying in is turning them completely feral and violent. And uh, the wolf ancient's like, Oh dear, our fleet up in flames. What a terrible, unexpected shame. As the green mist is kind of seeping its way, and she's like, That smell! It's like, Ugh! And you see, Mr. Corvin, it's just like the madness in Pontus, but how? It's like, Hold the door against them! And you see Arcanes just turning on each other. It's like, questions later, Kippa. I don't know how much time we have left. And you see the cats trying to help all the wounded out through the back. And you have, you're certain the tunnels are clear? So the Great Riders have been standing guard since the half of ordered them reopened. No Federation troops are nearby. It's a narrow window, but the humans might still be distracted with their attack on the fleet. And Corvin goes to Kippa and is like, you and I are leaving Ravenna. It's like, not without miss. 
The guests without her, I gave my word. The Lady Half Wolf has been secretly organizing this evacuation for days in case the Federation launched another attack. And you have the Grey Rider going, This kind of attack we can't defend against. And you see uh, something Kippa's carrying, like glowing with a yellow glow. And you hear a boom as an explosion comes in and rocks the near area nearby. And you see out in the streets the Warlord uh, Zinn and, and uh, Mike are fighting back to back. You have, What madness is this? It's like the same fucking insanity that took Pontus. Someone weaponized it. It's like, surely not everyone can be affected. Where are the civilian troops? It's like, occupied with other business if we're lucky. It's like, lucky? We're trapped here, whelp. We need them to defend the city and the wolf queen. And Zinn's like, taste foul. Tainted by the essence of a sister brother. I cannot eat too many. I might be poisoned as I was on the Isle of Bones. And Micah's like, Zinn, the blood fox used your kind as a drug to enhance his powers. Where's the wolf? And you hear a giant scream nearby. Oh, fuck, bro. <laughs> and you see the wolf queen with this, like, this huge glowing lightning sword. Green eyes just like with these like uh, lines radiating out from them. Uh, going, monster! And she's launching herself towards Zinn. And Micah's like, looks like you're getting that fight after all. And you see a moment with Professor Tam Tam, former first record keeper of the Ishami Temple and learned contemporary of Nimron Blackclaw. Jaff, from the darkness we emerged, resurrected inside new selves we could not have dreamed of becoming. And our enemies who thought us dead, who tried to murder us with hate, fled from our rebirth in despair at having made us stronger. An excerpt from the journals of Adara Farclaw, little ones. I read it, I read it every year as a reminder of what resilience and hope can give us. If only we are patient. Winter, after all, does not last forever, nor does hardship or injustice. This is a time for renewal. Spring has arrived. As we get to chapter 34, which is probably the last one I'll cover for uh, this video, but uh, we'll see. I might record another video today because this, this is good stuff. And you see, hurrah, the wolf queen's just like going towards Zinn. And he's like, finally, this is the face I remember. Your hate is the truest thing about you. And you have the warlord going, Mother, stop! And he's like, I'm your daughter! And she tries to block the uh, wolf queen's sword with hers. And he's like, you dare interfere? It's like, traitor! And you see the wolf sword just sending out like a giant shock wave of energy uh, rippling down the street. And he's like, oh, it's like, what has happened to her? It's like, I told you, it's that poison! It's like, I will not be denied! And Zin's like, denied what? You took everything it's like not everything i was too merciful in the end it's like your mercy is laughable and you see uh a tomb as someone shoots her right through the head and the world's like forgive me it's like <laughs> it's like goddess it's like how such a weakling sprang from my womb i will never know and zin's like enough with your ranting the vanity of your species are you never satisfied? And you see one of the other Arcanians rushing at Micah as the Wolf Queen's like, Are you satisfied, Zinn? He's like, Ah, there's too many! As a, one of them takes a bite out of the Warlord. He's like, Fuck, hold on! And he's like, Chumas Tuya comes in with help with her own gun. And the Ward's like, I didn't desire your help. He's like, I don't care. Arcanics need you. I need you. I can't let you die just yet. And you see a hiss as the wolf ain't just coming up behind uh, Micah. And Zin's like, child, we cannot allow our hearts, oh, god damn it, to break us. He's like, you're right, Zin. And you see Corbin coming in with the shield and going, Half-Wolf, run! As he's blocking uh, the wolf queen's sword. He's like, goddess, Half-Wolf, hurry, my shield won't hold. And the wolf queen's like, hey. And Zin's like, stop, not the masks. Remember the last time. We cannot hold the power as Micah's like trying to push it up to her face. She's like, we have to try. It's like, Zin, the masks are silent. I don't feel anything either. Maybe this time will be, and she just put like on the two pieces. Oh, God. And as you do, her face is like opening up in a silent scream as you have, hold us, release us, dream us, desire us, begin us, sing us, become us, fight us, love us, bear us. 
And you see here, you see a projection of the shaman emperor looming behind her, going, old gods, I silence you. You cannot have them. Their purpose is not yet revealed. And Zin's like, beloved. It's like the union not yet complete. He's like, beloved. It's like, beloved. What the fuck? Hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, that's fucking sick. <laughs> And you see with the mask on that Mike is basically like fused with Zinn into like this almost kaiju looking thing with like these horns coming out, like little trendles failing everywhere. And you see Kipper running up with her golden eyes glowing. It's like, Corvin, miss! It's like, I'm coming! Oh my god, and you see he's like these two ancient figures fighting against each other. Uh, assume it's like their true forms. So you see the wolf queen with like looking more feral, with like multiple eyes on her head and you see Zin's looking more features look more like the mask like the single eye in the middle and as they're cashing and exchanging blows you see back in Orum Lord Wolf is like meditating and he wakes up the gas goes my daughter and you see one of his eyes is glowing purple as he goes I so enjoy when you surprise me you create so many opportunities one day perhaps you will appreciate my surprises just as thoroughly and he sees like some more projections of like the other uh, monstrum watching this all going down. And you see a click as uh, back in, uh, uh, what was it, oh, it was an arm? Was that where the city is? Yeah. Uh, you see uh, uh, the Mother Superior and uh, was it uh, Gull? Uh, like cowering around the box, there's like a uh, purple energy beam like being projected out of it. It's like the half wolf. She's using the mask. The fragments are awake. It's like the song. The song. Tell me whose voice you hear. And you see uh, the Kumea attendants being like, The Inquisitrix, the Mother Superior. What's wrong with them? And you see the scientists just standing there, like fascinated by this, being like, Ch They'll shake it off. But this is a fascinating turn. I can only imagine what is awakened inside the box. And you see back with uh, the wolf ancient going, The Great Mask, curse the Shaman Empress. That is our birthright. I'll tear it from you. And you see uh, as the world trying to intercept, you have Tuya saying, Stay back, let them fight. And you see uh, the world just smashing her sword down on the energy shield going, Wake up, mother, remember yourself. And she swipes back at her and goes, I do. And you have, ah, as uh, Zin slashes at her and goes, And what, grandmother, will I tear from you? And you have, ah, as uh, one of the blasts uh, is taken out, uh, hits Tuya on the back. And uh, Kipa's like, Miss, you have to stop! And you see more of like the uh, energy blast coming from like the two clashing, hit into Kippa as well. And you see a chomp as uh, Micah Zin just takes a bite out of the Wolf Queen. Oh my god, and you see this giant eye just opening up in the sky as you have taste so good. Your blood glows, every drop burning. It's like, gah, I heal faster than your teeth. And it's like burning. And Tuya's like, Micah! It's like, who? Who are you? And Kippa's like, Miss! It's like, Miss, listen to me! If you don't stop, you're gonna kill us all! You'll tear open the sky! It's like, Kippa! And he's a wolf queen, like trying to lunge at her with the sword. And Mike is like, Kip, pa? It's like, fuck. It's like, I thought the mask would give us more power. It's like, they did. We are not dead. But his power is tainted. A miracle? We have not been overwhelmed. You glimpsed what was waiting for us. It's like, the shaman empress mastered this mask before, didn't she? It's like, yes. But she was the beloved. It's like this gamble is weakening the prison of my kind and will destroy other lives without even the benefit of feeding. It's like, yes, we might lose. If it's not a lack of power, then it's because we're disorganized. And he's like, disorganized? It's like, she will defeat us because we are not whole. It is why my kind lost our war against them. We were divided. We did not trust. It was my fault then and my fault now. I have not been gentle. I have not been loyal. And Micah's like, 
I don't know anything about your war with the ancients, but why me? Why would you be gentle? Why would I? I blamed you for who I am and you blame me for being a prisoner. But you didn't make me, just like I wasn't the one who tied you to my blood. It's like I speak of trust, but I fear trust. I fear how I will change. It's like, fuck Zin. Can it be any worse than who we are now? It's like, besides, some things won't change. Like how I'd g- God damn it. Like how I'd give my life for that girl. The same way I'd give my life for you. And Zin's like, then let us save the child. With that one act, we begin. And as they embrace inside uh, the little dreamscape, and you see uh, at this unit Corvin trying to stop uh, the Wolf Queen's blade, and you see this white explosion as another giant explosion, uh, very kind of like a cure, like big black orb style. And you have a cough, cough. It's like everything's just, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> that is some sick sci-fi shit. Oh. You see Kippa just like, ah, oh, oh. And you see Kippa. And you see instead of looking monstrous, it's almost like a tight-fitting like sci-fi suit now. With like these little prongs, like uh, little, you know, like L-shaped prongs jutting out of the back of it. And Kippa just like, yay, and you didn't kill us! <laughs> I love my daughter so much. Like She's just so adorable. It's like, you'll never stop running toward danger, will you? It's like, you needed me, miss. It's like, what have you become? It's like, I don't know yet. And you see Tuya just kind of looking at her in like fear and disgust. He's like, oh, it's like, I, I, and you see, I, as Tuya's like stepping back, she's about to fall. And as she is, you see Micah just grabbing her with uh, some of the tendrils from her suit and like holding her. It's like, Tuya, are you hurt? It's like, no, I don't think so. It's like, you're safe. Don't be afraid. And she kind of just like grabs her up close. And it's like, it's just me. And you see, yeah, as she's doing this, like, right now all of Micah's speed bubbles have been colored in uh, like a magenta colored. And as she's speaking, you see the mask kind of slowly lifting up off her face. And you see, like, the color just draining from the speech bubble. Very cool effect. Really love that. And you see it's like the speech bubble returning like the normal black and white. And it's like, it's just me. It's like, Micah's like, no, don't tell me why. Oh, God. And you see them exchanging a kiss as you get to chapter 35. Ah, uh, man. I'm uh, so tempted to continue. But like I mentioned in the last couple of videos... Uh, I want to try to keep these videos at least under uh, around an hour or so, under an hour, just because I feel like that's kind of the optimal kind of length for them. Uh, so I'll cut this one off here, but I will probably record another one uh, after this because I'm curious how much more uh, there is left of this. Uh, this is why I hate it when I cannot find like a table of contents thing on this. Very, very annoying. Why would you not give this to me? Uh, but yeah, so I will try to get that. I really wish this thing had like a way for me to scroll easier. Uh, but yeah, very, very enjoyable. Uh, again, we're kind of like a lot of this, a lot of these last two chapters just basically kind of like moving the plot along, getting like more characters introduced, uh, revealing more like the backstory, the connections and the history and everything like that. Uh, so really, really love those bits. I love how Micah's just kind of playing on the fact that everyone underestimates her so badly. And they think that, you know, she's like, oh, she's just like, you know, a violent brute. Uh, she doesn't know anything else. You know, she's not very smart. She's not very clever. Except that we as readers kind of know, like, you know, she's went to military school. She's picked up, you know, battle tactics and this kind of stuff. Like, you know, she's been, to, like, she's been getting, like, all kinds of diverse and varied training to prepare her for something. So she is smarter than she's given credit for because of, because people only see the one facet of her identity. He's kind of been pigeonholed as like this one thing. And I love how the last couple of chapters have been kind of showcasing that, you know, like you've all been vastly underestimating who I am, what I can do, what I'm capable of. Uh, so I really, really love all those aspects. I'm still not like a hundred percent really sold on the whole uh, Micah Tuya romance. I think mostly because we, a lot of this we kind of just seen and read about or read about from Micah's perspective 
with her kind of idealization, like romanticization of what Tui has done for her, like how she's been there for her and all that. Which given like, you know, how everyone else kind of reacted to her and treated her, makes sense why Micah latched onto her so strongly. Uh, so in that case, like it makes more, so in that regard, I'm just like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, you know why she feels like all these emotions stuff for her. But because we don't know much about Tuya, like what her goals are, uh, what her motivations are, like, you know, about her past, it's kind of hard to buy fully into the relate into their relationship without knowing too much about like one whole half of it. Uh, but the fact we get like little tidbits and pieces of this where Corvin mentions that, you know, that, uh, you know, she could have ratted on Mike at any point, but she tried to protect her until the oracles basically told her, like, you know, your destiny is unchanged, stuff like that. I'm hoping that's going to start giving us a little bit more insight uh, into uh, Tui as a character. Uh, so yeah, really looking forward to that stuff. Uh, as always, I love Kippa, uh, my optimistic little daughter. Just like a little cheers, like how happy every time she is uh, that Micah's like, you know, uh, Micah's like trying to act all gruff. And he's like, oh, I see through your your whole shtick. I uh, really, really love those aspects of it. Uh, but yeah, really, really looking forward to getting more of the lore stuff. Uh, really, really good chapter, or chapters, I guess I should say. Uh, looking forward to getting around to some more. Uh, so like I mentioned, I'll probably do a proper channel update sometime next week. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll get uh, back to my read-through backlog. Uh, so hopefully we'll get around to uh, quite a lot of videos. Uh, so a lot to look forward to. Uh, as always, if you like my content, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm very, very close now to reaching my subscriber goal. I'm at 166 right now, so I'm just three away from the current uh, one I'm looking at. So if you'd like to help me reach that, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, this is Ash. I'll talk to you all later.